everybody. This is Grant again. Nice to see everybody's smiling faces, or at least uh, everybody in chat. Uh, let's see, we have Don. Don's been promising for a while she would be on. Uh, she would make the show, which is cool. We're glad you you made it, John. And of course, Carl is here. Thank you so much, Carl, for showing up again. And Carl says Donna is not here, but she she might be here later, which would be nice because we always love Donna, of course. And Carl is saying that he's met you, Fawn, before. Yep. We we have uh, actually that's why it was like so weird to realize some of my friends know each other, but um, we've done some shows together, so. Yeah, isn't that weird? Uh, the indie comic community is kind of uh, a close knit thing, right? That's kind of what makes it awesome, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know, Efrain. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. I think that's how you pronounce it. But uh, yeah, on the show tonight, we have Fawn Simoniak. 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 Okay. Sorry, I promised I would get it right, and then I... You know what? I get it wrong sometimes, and it's my own name, so... Oh, really? <laughs> okay, well, maybe by the end of the episode, I'll have it figured out, right? It's okay. Just forget it. Fawn is fine. <laughs> and, okay, and everybody else is saying hi to each other. And, okay, uh, we'll get into the art. Well, this is a page... So I'm kind of, this is a page from Beowulf 6. So I, I'm about I'm about 80% of the way through fulfilling my Kickstarter for Beowulf 5. And so I'm, I'm kind of simultaneously working on my horror comic book and working on Beowulf 6. Uh, the neat thing about Beowulf 6 is that we get to see how Mooney and Hazel meet. So I don't know if you know the story about Beowulf, uh, Fawn. Yeah. But uh, so my so one of the characters is named Mooney, and he's based on my real life cat, who just recently passed away. Oh no. So this is Mooney. Um, people have asked me if it's if it's hard working on a comic book where, you know, one of the the characters was based on, you know, somebody who recently passed away. And honestly, it's kind of nice because it kind of feels like, you know, I'm still spending time with them. Yeah, I, say, I, I think it would almost be the opposite because it's kind of like you still have that connection with them. Well, right. Especially like when I'm drawing the, the fur, it kind of feels like it almost feels the same as like petting him, if that makes sense. Because like you're like rubbing his head. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Totally get it. So something else from this page, if you look here. There's a little Easter egg. It's a guest appearance from my new cat, who is named Yoshi. Oh. And uh, for those of you who don't know who Yoshi is, that's Yoshi. That is just a good cat. Yeah, she's adorable. She's she's crazy though. She runs around the house at at five o'clock in the morning. I have an orange cat. So that's all I need to say. <laughs> They are the craziest, but that's the best part. This is one of my favorite photos. Aww. She looks so cute. I love, I love when they first get spayed or neutered, and like they have the, the that soft, like warm belly. Yeah. So uh, Yoshi makes an appearance in this comic book, which I'm sure everybody will be happy about. Oh yeah. So. So Angie is my wife. She said that she misses she misses uh, her old man, Aww. which yes, I do too. Yeah, um, that kind of thing is yeah. It, it's it's always rough. Yeah, when a pet passes on, it's it's one of the hardest things in the world, isn't it? It really is, and of course, if people who don't have pets and really have never made that connection might kind of look at it like, oh, that makes no sense, but. I mean, I grew up with pets my entire life, so I definitely get it. Yeah, you might even be able to hear Yoshi in the background because Yoshi's running around uh, my bedroom right now. 
yeah, I, I have a lot of issues with uh, Arata sometimes uh, doing that. That's my uh, one of my two cats. It's my orange cat. He is actually sleeping right now next to me, though, so he'll hopefully be quiet the whole time. Yeah, and you can probably guess that we're, I think we're all cat people in here. <laughs> you can probably guess from Don's. The secret's out. None of us are people. We're all cats. <laughs> like that David Bowie song about cat people. Oh, God, um, as long as it's not like the musical, we're good. Or I right. should say the theatrical version of the musical. Look at them topians. I think she's talking about this photo. Oh, you know what? Why did why did I zoom in this much? You can't see her. There face. are some good tobeans there, though. I see them. Yeah, I love I love how she just like she doesn't really sleep. She almost like crashes, like like a guy who's just worked like a fourteen hour day, like. <laughs> She just like crashes on our bed. Okay, everybody's saying hi to everybody. Oh, Efrain's got a cat too, so I think it's official. Everybody is a cat person. Good. This is this is a good uh, a good group. So Don Aww, says we lasted two weeks after George passed away and brought Georgette and Buddy home. They just had their one year gotcha day. Gotcha days. Woo. That's awesome. Yeah, she said. Yoshi is a, Yoshi really is a very cute cat. And Carl I don't know, if says, it was up to me, I would pet everyone's cat. So, <laughs> so they need to figure out a way like long distance cat petting, right? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Although maybe Carl the cats like, might not like it so much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Carl mentioned on another note, I like how you've made the area around Hazel's eyes lighter. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Carl. Donna's here. Yay. Hi, Donna. Hi. And Efrain says cats are mysterious and love it. Please correct me if I'm mispronouncing your name, Efrain. Carol said she's <laughs> She rust has rusted her eyes. Cool. Okay, so yeah, so as you can see, I'm I'm kind of simultaneously working on on issue six of Beowulf. And I'm also working on my horror comic book, Memoirs of the Morbid. Oh, actually, here's another. Here, oops. Here's another drawing from Beowulf 6. Yeah, of course, obviously, that's a drawing from Beowulf 6. That is definitely what I expect to see in Beowulf. <laughs> right. So the reason why I'm showing you guys this art is because this is, this is one of my first homage covers. Um, so this is the cover that I'm homaging. And this is what I have done so far. And I hope oh, everybody, fun. thanks. I hope everybody knows that all of these are works in progress. Like, um, obviously I'm gonna go back in and put like shading and texture and stuff on this. But um, one of the neat things about this, uh, this little show is that I think I can do like, um, show the progress on stuff oh for sure i think uh there, it's always good if uh, as an artist or a comic artist to be able to show progress on stuff as you work on it because that way you know not only is it giving people like hey i'm still here i'm still working on stuff but i know from even like my like from my point of view as another artist i love just seeing like things come together and i think a lot of people are in that same boat even if they're not artists yeah hopefully that's what'll be uh people will enjoy about this particular show. I'm going to ask you a question now because of that homage. Uh, okay. Was there any like um, ins inspiration from Beowulf in any way, shape or form? Does like Superman have an influence on it or did it just have an influence on you? Uh, I mean, I would say every superhero is kind of influenced by Superman, right? Um, okay, that's fair. But, um, well, I mean, Superman is my favorite superhero, so... Well, see, that's uh, a good answer, too. So, yeah, so I would say that there's a big influence there. So the page we have here is a page um, from my horror anthology, which is called Memoirs of the Morbid. Um, and this is a story... It's called My Demon is a Centerfold. And it's about some teenage kids 
who are trying to um, summon a demon. It's kind of like a cross between Stranger Things and Weird Science, I would say. Oh, that's what I was thinking of, Weird Science. Okay, that's that's the name of the movie I was thinking of. Okay. Yeah. So um, Angie always gets on my case about... Uh, Angie always gets on my case about telling too much of the plot. So I'll try not, I'll try to be careful, but the idea is that they're, um, they're kind of luring the class bully into the woods kind of for, for uh, nefarious intentions. Um, it's part of the ritual, but again, I have to be careful because I have a tendency to tell too much summaries are very hard yeah so carl makes a good an interesting point he says in a literary way beowulf's legend was probably an influence on superman yeah so um the thing that i first kind of found interesting about beowulf was um the first time i read like the story uh it reminded me of like a comic book and um, that was kind of the first time I kind of realized, oh, you know, you know, these stories don't really, these stories don't really change that much. They're, they're all kind of just um, variations on the same kind of themes. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I think what you're saying is true, Carl. I feel like if you go by that regard, because it's the whole initial hero's quest and that whole thing that that started like really with storytelling and mythology and like that would include things like Beowulf in it. But yeah, I right. def I mean, obviously, some people get sourced from all sorts of things, and that's not a bad thing at all. Right. I mean, there was a book called The Hero's Journey where um, was it Joseph Campbell? He kind of goes into you know how all the different um, fairy tales have kind of influences. Yeah. So uh, that's not what I wanted to show. So this is another page from my upcoming horror anthology. Now I did not draw this. Uh, my friend Alberto Peso drew this. So this is a story about a baseball player who has kind of hit hard times and he becomes a custodian at a retirement home where there are lots of like ghosts and demons who are kind of feeding on these elderly. And uh, he kind of has to step up and be a hero and, and go up against these demons. The name of this story is Three Strikes, You're Dead. Uh, I haven't mentioned this yet, but uh, Memoirs of the Morbid will be on Kickstarter in in June, late June, but it'll be, it'll be on Kickstarter in June. And I think that there's a lot of neat art in this comic book. So I have one more page to show this is from my story uh my story is called it's the truly repugnant pumpkin charlie last name redacted and as you can probably tell it's kind of a parody of of the peanuts or it's the great pumpkin charlie brown uh or in what in some ways it's kind of an homage um and so this is page one of my story and I'm kind of trying to get it to, um, this is the last page and I'm trying to get it to kind of mirror the, uh, the first page. And this is probably the page that I'll be working on tonight when, while we talk. Um, yeah. So, um, I don't know, does anybody have any questions? Frasia. Okay, I don't know. Freya, it's a Norse mythology. Cool, okay. She I'll have cats. to look into that, Donna. 
Okay, so this is my friend Marvin Wynn. He's uh, he's actually under the same publishing house as I am, Comicsburg. And Marvin's another Pittsburgher, so we sometimes do conventions together. Oh, well, that's always fun. Yes, yeah, so everybody's saying hi. So I think it's time we introduced our guest today. Um, now, you are the creator of Zos Kiosk, correct? Yep, among other titles. That is mine. That's not yeah. what I have here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I, I was like watching you do that. I'm like, I can pull up a couple things that I'm working on. Like you, I am constantly multitasking. But sometimes, you know, you just need a break from uh, like one project to get to another. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of why um i started doing memoirs of the morbid it it's kind of like i mean it's a different genre um which i don't know i don't know if it's a good idea from a business standpoint to switch genres like that but um it for me it helps me keep my sanity just by different having a, like a variety of stuff i definitely understand that so how many issues are you up to? Oh, um, actually, volume 15, which, uh, so I do mine based on volumes over issues. So I guess if you were going looking at issues, I'm in what would be issue 75. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've been doing them in volumes because that's how I started it. Um, I know I've actually had some people since then more recently ask if I ever would consider doing it out in issues um, and maybe in the future it's something that I would. But um at the meantime, um, what I was most focused on doing, which is the Kickstarter that I just finished, was to get it actually printed in color. Because since the original volumes were in black and white and much smaller, and they had so many like little issues here and there, because I was it's it's been about seventeen years that, since I started this period since I started this chaos period. Oh wow! So yeah, it it's definitely been a massive learning thing. So can you look back on the earliest volumes and see stuff that you like you definitely have have improved on? Oh, God, or? yeah. Um, actually, here, let me pull this up. So um, I haven't finished this page yet, but I've been going back through and cleaning them up and read. So you, um, basically the top two frames right here, I have the dialogue turned off just for ease. Cause, right. You know, there's not much on this page. But yeah, I've been um, cleaning them up. So you can tell like the sky and stuff here is still different colors and redrawing some things. I was trying not to go too crazy, but I didn't like how this monster looked originally. Let me see if I still have the original. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, my desktop is also a mess like most artists. Um, oh, I actually did a comparison picture. That's even better. I saw that in here. I saw you. I, there it is. So yeah, there there was my redraw. <laughs> oh wow! I just okay, yeah. That, that so. was the end of the last chapter. So I, I, there's five chapters per book, basically, is how I've been doing it. So yeah, so I would say, kind of in every way, there's been progress, right? Yep. I mean, I, would and, say I mean, it's it's one of those I've looked back at it and really wanted to redraw it for a long time, but also was like I don't want to just stop the story where it's progressing. We have, uh, it's kind of I, in my head, I, or like, I guess I should say in my notes, I have it broken down into like four major storylines and we just finished, uh, or just are finishing, uh, the third of the four or so, but yeah, like that, that's why it's, uh, the cleaning up is taking me so long now though, because I'm redoing like everything. So are you going to re-release this as like an, like kind of how like, um, like musicians will re release like a remixed like album from like 20 years ago are you going to kind of do that too yeah i mean basically this is specifically for the color version for the that was kickstarted so it's getting it in pretty colors too um but yeah i figure i'm actually going to go back and probably redo um even the black and white versions with these new pages and just kind of clean it up as i go at least until i get rid of the black and white currently people still want them though so because I did, I did pull people for what I, they wanted me to do with volume 15, and they were all like, no, I'll just do it in black and white so we can get it fast. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, I so far, I mean, I've only done five issues of, of Beowulf, but people have already kind of mentioned that they've seen things that they, um, that 
anything notice like I've improved upon. So it's always, that's always good. yeah, that's I think one of the best things about doing stuff over a period of time, especially if it's the same characters, is that you can really see like your growth. Yeah. Um, yeah, I keep thinking, you know, it would be nice, like, as I get more successful to be able to hire some people to help me with the comic book, just so it won't take me like four or five months to do. Oh my God. That issue. is my dream to hire somebody to help. <laughs> <laughs> there, well, but I was thinking like that, you know, in some ways that would be nice in other ways, I'll kind of miss doing some of the stuff, you know, you know what I mean? I feel like, like because I'm so used to doing um so much of it by myself, like the most I would probably be able to like pass off would be like, oh, here, do the typesetting or, you know, um, maybe do flat colors or something. Or I really don't like doing backgrounds. I'm still not great at that. I'm yeah. learning better now, but um, that's obviously been a, you know, it's a slow thing, but like stuff like that would be good if I could just throw it off. In the case of cleaning up these frames, it would be nice just to have somebody clean up the frames uh, as in the outlines of them. Just draw me some lines, dudes. Yeah. I keep joking with everyone, telling them do it. Draw me lines. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what I would do. Um, like, yeah, I think the lettering can be kind of boring at times. Um, sorry if there are any letterers watching the, the show. I mean, I uh, feel like for everyone has their own interests. So it's just because it's not something that's like our favorite thing to do doesn't mean that somebody else doesn't like adore it. And that's, that's totally cool because we need people to like every aspect of it. Otherwise books don't get yeah, done. Exactly. I mean, there, there are letterers that I'm, I'm definitely, I mean, it's definitely a legitimate skill. Uh, I mean, I've seen I some don't... really bad lettering in comics. So right. Yeah, um, including some that are actually like legit published. Like uh, I was gonna say, I know Grant um, already mentioned this earlier, which that was before we were talking on stream, but um, I work at a comic book shop. So um, I get to see lots of cool things come out and lots of things that make me wanna cry. Oh, really? Yeah, and my, uh, my the owner, so it's owned by a, a family. Um, it's a very small local shop, but it's growing tremendously and we're you know having growing pains right now. But um, one of the cool things is, though, is the uh, the husband of the family that owns it, he also does art. And so, yeah, we, on slow days, will sometimes pick up books and cry together. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, yeah, so gonna... it, it's also just really cool seeing some of the stuff that gets out. And then it's also some of it is like, why why did they publish this? But I guess, you know, if it showed up at our shop, that means somebody must have ordered it, too. So that's what I, I try to keep in mind as well. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to run through some of the comments really quickly. Okay. Donna says being able to switch back and forth helps to not get writer's block. Too. Oh yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, it's I think that's staying true. with one project for too long can just, not only does it like burn your brain to the point, it just makes you so unmotivated and yeah, then you run into like writers or artist block. So I get that one. Definitely. So Angie says to remember to share this channel, which I mean, that's why I love her. She's always promoting. Uh, and and Carl and Donna both said, both liked and shared. Thank you so much, guys. So Carl says, wow, your technique has really gotten more realistic. I would say improved, but you're already better than anything I could do. I think he's talking to you, Fawn. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um well, I was going to say, I, I can't say anything for Carl's artistic skills because I have not actually seen them. But it's one of those cases where I knew what my weaknesses were and still are in um, drawing. And anatomy is definitely a big one. I did not take art classes. I hated art, ironically. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, until about high school when I, I kind of was always stuck with people who were drawing. And, you know, you just kind of pick it up because they're all doing it. And then somebody was like, hey, can you design a tattoo for me? I'll give you money. And I was like, wait, what? Huh, I'm actually wow. decent. When did that happen? But yeah, so when I realized that like I had some skill there, because also my older sister is also an artist, so that was kind of one of those standard sibling rivalry things that, you know, oh, she can do art. I don't want to do it too because I'll be like compared to her. But we have totally different styles. So right. and nowadays we actually do some collaborative stuff together too. So she doesn't really do comics though. Oh, really? What type of stuff does she do? 
Oh, I'll never see it. How sad. Um, so she she does do some art. Um, mostly she does like just pinups here and there. Um, she actually was one of the guest artists for the art on my uh, last Kickstarter. She did a piece for me, but um, she That's really awesome. really excels at miniature painting and like she'll uh... make make um gosh like make her own L like environment stuff for it too it's okay. insane like she'll be looking at something that you know that's like two inches tall she did yeah. something for me she painted a, a figure up for me of a character named tubi from a video game called near automata for uh christmas okay. and like she's got this uh white embroidery on her skirt her it's her skirt and I don't know how she did it. It literally is so freaking detailed, but it's, it's, I don't, I don't know how she got it that thin and it looks amazing. So I was into the mini painting for a little while. It was something that kind of kept me busy over quarantine uh, for a little while. Uh, Angie and I are both board gamers. Oh, yep. So. Same. I game a lot too. That's probably why she got into it. Not because of me directly, but because we both game. So. Yeah, so I kind of got started doing it just um, painting like the minis that came with our our board games. But it, it's fun. It I don't know. There's something almost kind of like uh, meditative about drawing something that small, if that makes sense. I, I can understand it because I have other things that I like to do like that. But in regards to... Painting that small because I have bad eyes and bad hands. I know as the artist says that. Um, usually I just want to scream and throw it across the room. Yeah, I can that's, see that's that. That's okay. I'll let her yeah. do it for me instead. Okay, so Donna says it's the same thing in prose writing. I can see the difference from my first Hunter's Ridge story to the latest. Well, that's good. I would think anything, any kind of, even if it's not considered an art, like any skill you have. Um, so yeah, it could be art like music or writing or actual drawing or, you know, painting, even cooking or something. You're going to see a difference because if you don't, that means there's a problem. <laughs> right. Don says teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah. Unfortunately, right now, we I can't really afford to have too much teamwork. Um, Joe Bachman says, good evening, folks. Apparently, I'm just going to run late to every show today. So I should How mention dare you, person I don't know. I should mention Joe is a sponsor of the show, and I oh. apologize that I forgot to bring that up at the start. I guess I'm just really bad at this. It's uh, it's a Monday. Yeah, uh, Joe has a really cool website. It's called the Indie Comics Network. Oh, okay. I saw the name pop up here. It just said Indie Comics Network stuff. So that's cool. Yeah, you should actually think about. Um, getting in touch with Joe just to see if he can get like a, uh, your name and, and profile up on his website. I do Everybody feel like sing. I've been to that website before. No, no, he's not. No, not indie comics network. That's a different place. Did I say, oh, did okay. I say indie comics network? Is it, I think, I believe it's actually the indie comics directory. Indie independent creator directory is that correct? Independent creator directory. Yeah, okay. Directory. I, that's I what the apologize. username says. That one I have not heard of, but yeah, that explains it. But it's always good to have different uh, ways to find different indies and stuff too. I think. Yes, as I've mentioned, this is this is only my fourth or fifth episode, and I am very bad at this. I I will get uh, the names of all our sponsors down and be able to. To recite them. So Carl says he's a writer, but he can't draw worth a cent. Well, that's all right. I mean, um, you know, we need all different types of skills, right? There's a lot of people who can draw and can't write. So yeah. So in background. So you write and draw your comic book, correct? Yep. Okay. So um, now, were you nervous about? writing uh or did you or was that something you had been doing before you started writing? actually um i i started as a writer before an artist and i had way more confidence in the writing than the art when i started okay but i have also worked with um i i did a, some small projects with other writers where i did the art and stuff and i actually have one project where i did the writing and somebody else did the art 
that's not normal. And it didn't go very far, but you know, it was just kind of a fun thing to play around with. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So you weren't nervous about the writing. Were you, were you more nervous about the art? Yeah. And I mean, looking back at it now, I'm like, Oh boy. Yes. I've seen worse for even stuff that's like published and stuff, but I'm like, I, I, it's not even just the art. It's the whole thing with like the layout and everything. If I had waited a bit, a bit longer, I probably would have been able to learn it a little better. Because, yeah, but um, I mean, yeah, but I, mean, I, I had sure. a friend who started guiding me and like mentoring me shortly after I started. I mean, I'm sure you learned stuff as you were going as well. Um, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, I always encourage people. I always say, you know, start making comic books as soon as you can, because you're going to learn like, Okay, you can either spend like the next five years sitting around with anatomy books, learning anatomy, or you can actually make a comic book and you'll learn anatomy as you're doing the comic book, you know, and you'll also have like the finished comic book, you know what I mean? I just always, whenever people ask me for advice, I'm just like, you got to start, just do it. It's okay if it sucks at the beginning. It's okay if it's, you know, cringeworthy. My first comic was got awful and I thought I had gotten rid of it and then we were cleaning the basement at my parents house and I found it I was like why is this still around yeah the only problem is now everybody everybody always wants issue one right because they want to start at the beginning of the story and and it's like oh I, please check out issue two also well, that's, that's why I think with that you don't have to necessarily publish the first one or if you do you can always go back and redo it that's I mean exactly what I'm doing right now too yeah well yeah or, I mean, I mean, we've been talking a little bit, you know, in the grand scheme of things, the important thing is, you know, getting your work out there. So, I mean, I don't know. You know, maybe if your work, your early work isn't great, you know, hopefully nobody will buy it, right? Well, I mean, some people might still. It's it's strange to think how many people actually started reading and buying my stuff when I couldn't draw it very well. And they've stuck with it this long, which makes me really happy, too, because that, that's a long time to stick with a project. Yeah. Wow. So you have people who are fans from the very beginning? Yeah. Um. It was so weird when I first started it. I got a piece of fan art in the first week from some girl from Russia. She could barely speak English and I didn't, I don't still to this day don't know Russian, but I thought that was a really cool. And then yeah, like, yeah, some That's of the awesome. people that I know have been reading it from the beginning. Um, one of them, ironically, I ended up doing some uh, role play with after a while, like uh, basically tabletop stuff. But it was so it was weird because we did it online function. And it's like some of these people have been around so long. It's I feel like, you know, it's second nature to just say something to them about the story. I'm like, right, you guys don't know that. That's the author stuff, not you. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome that you've had fans for that long. So Joe is saying that he can't draw either. That's OK. He can code. Coding is a much more marketable skill. Coding is definitely a good skill to have. So Carl likes to take photos. Photography is also good. I'm actually reading the comments in real time. So I see your guys' conversation directed at me. I'll respond when we catch up with it. <laughs> right. Marketing is actually, I think, one of the worst skills for most indies. And yeah. honestly, like even myself, while I can do it because I was a design major with a minor in marketing, I would love to just hand that off to somebody else because I have so much other crap going on. You know, that's like, can we just not do everything? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... I go back and forth on this, too. Because it's like, you know, at the end of the day, if if you're spending two hours a day marketing, that's two hours a day that you're not working on your comic book. Yeah. So, like, while, like, yes, that that marketing might improve like you might attract i don't know three customers with your marketing skills but i mean at the end of the day your comic book is going to suffer because of that um so i go back and forth on 
I guess I go back and forth on where the line is between um, the right amount of marketing and the right amount of, of working on your book. Yeah, that makes a lot of, I mean, that's, it, it does sometimes, well, even, even just without having to go back and forth on an opinion, there's just going to be sometimes you're like, okay, I need to get this project done. So it's going to have to be my focus. I need to do the marketing. It's going to have to be my focus. I actually, um, just, just this past weekend did, did a convention myself. So, okay. um, you know, I was there selling all three days at my table and stuff, but yeah, I, I draw the whole time I'm there. If I get a commission, obviously I have to do that. But um, otherwise, you know, I just draw, chat with people, take care of what I need. I always bring an assistant too, just in case. Do you like doing the conventions? Um, I've been doing them for so long. It was second nature. This one was just weird though, because with the pandemic, this was my first uh, large con that I've done in like three years. Every other one I've done has been really smaller, like um, like local library cons, local comic cons. Nothing super big. Um, I live right. I live in Indiana, but I'm on the cusp of Illinois. So a lot of the stuff I do is just in Illinois or even in like Michigan and Wisconsin. And like yeah. this one is just a lot bigger. So even though it was in Illinois, I went from like, you know, places that would have maybe 1K people to something that has like 50,000 people. <laughs> and I had done right. this con before. It's just, you know, it's a whole brave new world now and sitting out for so long. I'm just like, oh, wow, things have changed and they haven't. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think I'm starting to enjoy the conventions. Um, I, I'm i not the most personable person in the world. I feel like people become artists maybe because they're not the most social people in the world. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I can't, I, I can't disagree with that because I was pretty badly antisocial when I started drawing. Right bad anxiety about everything and I you know years of doing it and throwing myself in the forefront have definitely helped but for, for me the um, the um, for me the way I I kind of get through the conventions is I, I think of them as kind of like an adventure as opposed to uh, thinking about them as you know work um, and that's nice. I mean, there's always something interesting at conventions, right? There's I mean, always, yeah, there's, there's always cool stuff there. And of course I like meeting the other artists and stuff too myself. I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of art uh, and even at, even before I was an artist and now as an artist, I'm like twice as much and I'm like, Oh my God, art books and comics and other indie creators and whatever I can find. I just need it. Also, I'm so sorry for your lost independent creator. <laughs> I'm sorry. He said he's an Indiana person. <laughs> Oh, okay. You know what? I'm so far behind on the comments. I, I'm almost like tempted to give so up. So usually what I do when I stream with uh, the comments thing is I have them do like live running. Um, because not everyone is going to be something that you directly need to necessarily um, um, respond to. And sometimes you can kind of respond in mass to them. So um, yeah. th that's at least how I've done it. Um, and yeah, I am going to actually look into ICD after this so i'll go and check it out i mean twenty dollars was fine tons even better so and i'm always definitely looking for my own ways to network and stuff too because yeah I'd like it's not just about you know being like oh man i want to want opportunities to get bigger or whatever it's literally like i just want to know what's out there and be able to read and find new stuff and meet new creators and be able to you know meeting other people who do stuff like that it's always great because you can bounce ideas off and kind of get okay this worked for them maybe it won't Maybe, but maybe it won't work for you and vice versa. Just kind of like advice and stuff like that. So you guys, okay, so he, he's excited because you're an Indiana person. Yeah, that's why I said sorry for your loss. <laughs> so something crazy, I can, so I'm actually an Indiana person too. I'm I was sorry born, for your loss too then. <laughs> I was born in a town called Indiana, Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. So that's funny. Were, were you aware that Indiana, Pennsylvania exists? Yep. I've done, um, gosh, when I was younger, I did conventions all over and I did a couple in uh, Pennsylvania, but we drove through it a lot for other cons too. Cause I used wow. to hit Baltimore every year so for one. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, Indiana. What I thought you were going to say is I thought you were going to say, oh yeah, I know Indiana PA. I've been to a, a, I've been to a keg party there. 
Oh gosh, that's no. what everybody always tells me about. I, I, I don't think I've ever been to a keg party, period. There I even are. bailed out of the one of my little sister's wedding. I wanted to go home and sleep. <laughs> wow, so there's a lot of Indiana people here. Well, yeah, that, that's exactly how I met Carl and stuff because he's in the same area. Carl and right. Donna, I see them at a lot of Indiana events. Yeah, the, it's crazy. The Indiana, the, uh, the indie comic book world is very, is kind it of It actually small. makes me really happy to know that too, though, because for the longest time I felt so like isolated because I go to these author shows and author events and primarily you weren't seeing other people do illustration anyways, but it was all like romance. Oh my God, dude, you're like right near me then. <laughs> I'm also North with Indiana. <laughs> Oh, so while we're on the subject of of uh, conventions, I did promise to tell my uh, my funny convention story. I did a convention this weekend, and uh, the the uh, I guess the person who was running the convention came out and did kind of an announcement uh, saying. You know, there's not to be any drinking or eating in the convention, which um, I'm pretty sure I was, uh, I'm like everybody in that I kind of just blew it off. Like, it, what are you talking about? It, it's a convention. Of course, we're going to eat and drink in here. Like, that's what you do when you're at a convention. I, so, I mean, sorry. I know I've, some have tried to limit like outside food and drink but usually they allow like water in and stuff that's so weird so i had well i had a water bottle and i had a um i had a bag of almonds or a bag of nuts as as people who like to tease me like to call it because everybody's joking about how i got my nuts confiscated <laughs> um yeah, Her Herwinberg, uh, this is a, a friend of mine who does a comic book called Herwinberg. He was also at the same convention, and he, he got his coffee cup confiscated. So, oh, my God. Um, so, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is the story I'm telling. So, uh, there was a woman who was walking around checking to make sure nobody was eating or drinking, and... Uh, we were joking that uh, if she if she stays on this path, she could definitely have a future as a dominatrix, <laughs> uh, because she just she has the whole like domination thing uh, down to a T. Um, but I, I mean, to me, the thing that was was so ridiculous. You know, I had a bag of of nuts. And it was, you know, down under the table. I was being very discreet about it. Uh, you know, I wasn't like trying to shove it in anybody's face. Oh, look at me, I'm eating. But um, uh, yeah, this this young, like 25 year old woman who I don't know if she was like on some type of power kick. Not only did she she come over and give me a stern lecture, then she went and got her supervisor who also came over and gave me a stern a stern lecture and both of them actually threatened like if they caught me eating in the convention again they threatened to uh have me removed from the convention which i had already paid money for which in my opinion it was uh very much making a mountain out of a molehill so, uh, yeah, so that's my exciting story about, uh, Gosh, I just, yeah, I was like, why? I, I mean, I was literally eating at my table while talking to customers. I yeah. had a poke bowl from one of the, that, like one of the, uh, Kassansh K K oh my God. English. Well, I mean, that was sessions in there. Yeah. So, I mean, that was one of the things that I thought was so crazy was like, I mean, they have a food truck right outside the convention and i mean okay yet yeah, like yeah sure i i can go outside and um and eat but i mean 
I mean, I don't want to be away from my table. Well, yeah, long. realistically, typically a vendor does not leave their table very long. So even for like a lunch break, you're going to be behind there, maybe hiding back there to eat, but you're not going to like literally go and sit down and have like a two hour lunch or something. Right. You don't want to, people want to go to the tables to see, to meet the artists and meet the authors and stuff. And, you know, they don't want to just meet some uh, assistant you have there. Right. Exactly. So, well, I don't think of Angie as being my assistant, but, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah that's understandable. I, I, uh, my fiance, uh, came, came with me to this show. He doesn't come to all of them. I, I switched between him and, uh, whoever else I can get. My mother comes a lot. Yeah. Angie has been really great. I mean, the nice thing about Angie is Angie's actually like a legitimate say she has salesmanship as opposed to me who like, I kind of, I kind of try to, to bumble my way through the salesman part of the job. But, uh, Angie can actually sell. I people. also feel like, at least from my point of view, um, like I can go and um, I have other friends who are artists, even if they don't do comics and stuff. So I could go and promote their stuff and, you know, help them sell their stuff and have no problem. But then when it comes to my own, I'm like, eh. I think yeah. it's easier to do it when it's not yours. And you yourself are going to be the most critical of your stuff. So. Well, and also, I mean, I'm sure a lot of that is because it, it's personal to you. Yeah. So. Yeah, I would wonder if that's the convention center itself or the organizers, because that's such a dumb rule. If it's a convention center, you don't ever want to go back there. Yeah. No eating. But they let you give away candy to buyers. That's a good question. So, I mean, the crazy thing is the hall that we were, were doing this convention in is normally oh. a basketball court, which is crazy to me. I can't believe that they actually, they, people go in and watch basketball games with, and, and don't eat popcorn or, or hot dogs or whatever. Well, they usually know. would probably have the, uh, what do you call it? The, the bleachers up. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's, I mean, even if they did that, they could have just like put tarps down or something, you know, like you can get runners and stuff easy. Right. Gosh, that's crazy. You're I'm not right. sure. I'm not sure what he's referring to. Maybe uh, when you're talking about how you're the most critical of your own stuff. Oh, yeah. right. I think. I think also sometimes. I mean, when we're selling stuff, you can sometimes you can be your your own worst enemy. Where it's like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's almost like you you set up like psychological barriers towards selling these stuff so that uh, you know i don't know i think like a lot of artists are kind of afraid of rejection I, that's yeah. part of it too but like personally i don't know like why but i just feel like so guilty about throwing stuff in people's face and obviously when you're selling art and stuff it's all out there for them to see anyways but i there's just the difference between letting them look by their own and being like hey hey look at me look at me and I know, obviously, that's exactly what marketing is, but yeah. um, sometimes that hurdle is hard to get over, especially, yes, because of things like imposter syndrome and just the whole fact that I a lot of people who are indies and stuff, um, when they're first starting out, too, they just they don't have that same level of confidence like some of the other ones do. And it there doesn't mean that they don't have the skills to back it up. It's just there's that still that beginner mindset with that and like, oh, I don't want to make somebody upset or... So it's kind of a weird thing. Yeah. Um, so, Don, I can be petty as well. And I think that's what I was trying to fight against. Because, I mean, overall, the convention was really was really nice. I didn't want... I didn't want to ruin a nice convention over one bad interaction, if you know what I mean. So I guess that that's kind of a sign that I'm maturing. Because cause when I was 20 years old, I would have totally just like lost my temper and ended up getting kicked out. So. I do think it would be a good idea though, to let up uh, to contact like, um, I think they usually ask for like surveys and information after a convention, like the, the people running the convention themselves. 
and yeah. like actually, you know, just ask, Hey, are, this is a problem we had, you know, it's a little hard to be able to work in, especially like food or, you know, where it, it, it sounds like they wouldn't even let you guys have like drinks. So they probably weren't even letting you have water in there. Yeah. Which is pretty ridiculous. Yeah, That's a really bad one. Yeah. And yeah, you can't expect people to be vending at a show all day and not have some kind of hydration or food. So just, you know, let them know this is a concern you have and, you know, it it means that next year maybe they'll look at for a different venue or something if they hear enough of the uh, uh, the vendors and stuff. Being That's like, what I'm no. hoping. Yeah, so Angie's making an innuendo. Yeah, I see There's her. I see, I see them them dirty jokes on the side. There's been enough innuendo about my nuts, but uh, <laughs> uh, maybe they were jealous of the nuts more than the balls. Uh, maybe that's true as well. Okay, so um, so Don, I do try to keep these under 50 minutes. Um, uh, so it's been about 50 minutes. Uh, was there anything you wanted to plug? Anything coming up? Any streaming shows? Um, yeah, I can co totally do that. So, um, well, obviously, Zos Kiosk is uh, what we mentioned before. Zos Kiosk is um, actually also, it's an online webcomic is how it started, and it still is up there. And it's horribly, horribly, originally bad version uh, for now, at least. Mm -hmm. So um, that is something that um, will be getting upgraded, but it's uh, Z-O-S-K-I-A-S.com. Nice and simple. Um, I'm going to be doing a bunch of li little shows here and there throughout the year, some bigger, some smaller, mostly staying in the Midwest. Sorry, guys, I'm tired of driving too far. Yeah. Um, and then Zos Kiosk Volume 15 will be getting its Kickstarter probably beginning of July because its official 17th year anniversary is July 10th. So um, I always do some fun celebrations and stuff like that. I stream on Twitch, but if you find me on any, like you can find me on those kiosks or whatever, even, and you can find my name. And if you just look up Sanzaki Kojika, which is my pen name, uh, it's all right there. Everything is me, if it says that. I believe Fawn would bring it up too, Fawn Simoniac, because that's a kind of weird combination too. But yeah, so so that, that that's, I guess, my little plug thing. Well, thank you so much. Um, I just want to mention a few things I'll be doing. I'm going to be doing Three Rivers Con. Uh, for, well, fortunately, this next weekend coming up, I'm going to have a rare weekend off because, oh, my God, I'm looking at I'm looking at my I keep looking at my schedule for this summer and I keep thinking like, oh, my God, why did I volunteer for all these? Oh my God, I'm the same way, especially because that's some of these shows are like, hey, we want you to do like panels or something. I'm like, oh God, it's not what I asked for. And then I say yes because I don't understand how to say no. Yeah. Thanks, Don. I appreciate it. I'm glad you were able to join us too. Um, oh, okay. So that's cool. Yeah, he said that I can send him cons that I'm attending. You can throw them on the indie comic directory. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Joe. Um, yeah, so so two weeks from tonight is, or not two weeks from tonight, but two weeks from this weekend is Three Rivers Con, which is my favorite convention in the whole wide world. Um, I like it because it's a real convention they have comic creators from all over the country, but the big the big name comic book creators don't overshadow the littler guys. It's just a really great convention. I know that, like you said, it's it's a bit of a drive for you, but maybe in future years you should look into uh, it. Actually, parts of I mean, I I typically I've got one con I'm going to this year that's already like. Uh, five hours that's about my max right now but um if i can get other people to drive that always helps helps too so but do you have any conventions coming up in ohio because i sometimes yes i have ohio. several actually in ohio oh yeah so maybe yeah maybe we'll maybe actually we'll i have talk. like some all the way out by youngston even so oh we're going to youngstown convention i'm going to the the what is it youngstown comic-con <laughs> awesome okay well i might see you there So yes, thank you as well. Oh, I should probably show my screen. Before yeah, I was like, I... I'm just writing on here now. <laughs> so... Thanks for having me, though. This was fun.
Yeah, I should probably show my screen just so I can show the progress. Not that I know that I, I don't think I did that much. See, I, I, it takes me forever to draw stars because I try to make them look random. I don't know. For me, drawing stuff that's random is harder than drawing stuff that has. No, like, it makes perfect sense. Uh, for stars, I actually tend to use like a, I have this brush that's almost like a starburst pattern. And I don't use leave it as is because I blurred and stuff, but I kind of like that like faded um, look, you know, it gets and it already has some lighting to it. But no, so, it's a, I take a long time with stars or rain or wind or, or I should say snow, not wind. Yeah, I have a star brush too, but but I get like, I can't just leave it like it is. I, then I get really perfectionist about like how the brush. Oh, even I though, do them like, one at a time, even with the brush, it's like click. Click, click, yeah. So, no, I'm the same way. It has to be, like, I want it to be disorganizedly organized. <laughs> okay, so that, yeah, so that's the work that I did today. Uh, I think I'm going to close the show now. Thank you so much for showing up, Fawn. And... Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think And thank everybody... you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thanks, guys. This has actually been my my best viewed episode so far, so I don't know if that was because you were on or if it's just starting to pick up steam or, or what. I hope it's a bit of both. <laughs> yeah. Love me, guys. No. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Uh, have a great night, and I'll keep in touch with you. Yep. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.